to Lifetime in Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. My hair's a little bit longer, but, uh, you know, this is what happens when you have a kind of haircut in a year. I am your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we're talking about The Wrong Valentine. If you didn't notice, my Free Britney shirt. Um, yeah, Free Britney, okay? The Wrong Valentine stars Miss Vivica A. Fox, Mariah Robinson, Evan Adams, and Ari Thompson. On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So, what are we going to do to the wrong valentine? Pour it up! If you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and press pause because I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. The movie starts off with Emily and her mother, Ashley, enjoying a movie while being stalked. This is why we get curtains, people. Miss Vivica A. Fox plays a history teacher or a history teacher and runs something called the History Club. She plays matchmaker and sits a new student with a typical bad boy haircut next to Emily. After the history meeting, David tries to win Emily over with a lame history quote. Always been a firm believer. That if you don't know your history, you'll be doomed to repeat it. He invites her on a coffee date and then sends her pictures of food that would typically be found in a coffee shop. It's a strange way of flirting and Emily's mom is into it. Emily's mom has interesting fashion choices. At coffee, Emily and David bond over their lost fathers. David has also lost his mother and he probably killed her. Emily throws a Valentine's Day slash birthday party and invites her one friend, Michelle. David also shows up with flowers for Emily and her mom. He's a charmer. He even flirts with Michelle. So maybe not so charming. When Emily tries to kiss David, he denies her and puts Emily in the friend zone. When he leaves, he doesn't go far and creeps outside the house. He is there into the morning and Emily sees him plainly in the sliding glass door and confronts him. He makes up some lame excuse. I said we could get some breakfast before school. Being spontaneous, I thought you think it was cute. She forgives him. She even forgives his other behaviors, such as grabbing her arm and demanding to know who's texting her at all times. Possessive and abusive behavior should never be tolerated. A guidance counselor steps in and warns Miss Vivica A. Fox about David. What about David? I don't like him. Okay. You do? Michelle and David hook up in his car and he slut shames her immediately afterwards. Then he asks her not to tell anyone. Michelle, of course, tells Emily. Emily kicks her ex BFF out of her house. Michelle? What happened? My ex best friend hooked up with David last night. David shows up at Emily's mother's office and threatens her. Then later, she kicks him out of the home after he breaks in to talk to Emily. This house is hideous, by the way. Next, David overhears Emily and the guidance counselor talking about college admission. He crashes the interview and ruins Emily's meeting. Then, he stalks the guidance counselor in a parking lot and stabs her to death. Emily and Michelle learn of Miss Stein's death, but they don't seem to care. You know what happened? Hear what? Mrs. Stein. What about her? She's dead. I I can't believe she's dead. Ashley sees David on her home security and screams at him. To retaliate, David wrecks Ashley's office, which isn't good. But the good news is a hot cop shows up and investigates the crime scene. Lifetime hunk alert. Emily decides to take matters in her own hands and breaks into David's not-stalkery house. Where's his serial killer wall? Emily learns that David's mother committed suicide after his father died. Emily sees a terribly photoshopped photo and realizes that they have the same dad. Emily tells her mom everything that she's learned and they call the cops. David takes out the hot cop by the pool and kidnaps Ashley in a scary jump scare moment. The prodigal son returns. You know, I always wanted to say that, but I guess stepson works as well. David delivers his villain monologue while Ashley unties herself. She chokes him out, and Emily grabs the gun and shoots her half-brother dead. 
Miss Vivica A. Fox pops up to say that titular line of the movie. It looks like you picked the wrong Valentine. And that is the wrong Valentine. So we all know how I feel about Miss Vivica A. Fox. Love her and love that she's produced, I think, 25 of these wrong movies. It's amazing. And she's not only the producer, she is in every one of them in some capacity. That's impressive. She's either a mom, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, guidance counselor, cheerleader coach, you name it, she's done it. This one, she is playing a more side character, but you know, the girl can't memorize lines for every leading role. So I like that she's not afraid to put herself into a smaller part to let other people shine. And they really did here. One thing Miss Vivica won't play is a villain. In a recent article in The Wrap, Miss Vivica said she will never play the bad guy. Then she can always say that titular line. Speaking of the villain, David, played by Evan Adams, was a really well-written character. He had clear motivations, and though he was literally the worst, he was really well-played by Evan Adams. Evan Adams is kind of like the new Evan Peters. He gives me that same type of vibe. I have never seen him in anything. This, this was his first movie role. He did a really good job playing somebody who has been through a lot, and the motivation was there, and his He was just all in all a creepy dude, and I loved it. One missed opportunity was getting this guy with his shirt off because he has an amazing body, not in a weird way. Like, this guy is obviously way too young for me to date, but, you know, we have shirtless men in all these movies, and this guy is built. He does parkour. He is a skateboarder. You know, he's a model. And now he's an actor, so good for him. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. This movie had a lot of good representation. Obviously, it's a Miss Vivica A. Fox joint, so she is going to make sure to include POCs in roles that are significant. There's Miss Conley, played by Miss Vivica A. Fox. Emily, played by Mariah Robinson. Ashley, played by Ari Thompson. Sarah, played by Severa Windani, Dr. Wilson, played by Daniel Yu, and The Sexy Detective, played by Chris Rouse. That's not his character name, uh, but I just call him Sexy Detective. And that wraps up today's episode. If you want more Lifetime on Court, you can listen to our podcast, which is currently on a hiatus, or you can check out our website, lifetimeuncourt.com. Don't forget to leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe to our channel. And if you have an idea for a movie you'd like us to cover, leave a comment and suggest one. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, I forgot my social media. Sorry, I haven't recorded one of these in a while. Uh, you can follow me at Patrick Miguel or at the show at Lifetime in Court. Don't forget to donate to our Ko-fi if you like, uh, if you like these videos and you want more of them. Uh, this wine is not free, okay? So maybe make a little donation and uh, I don't know what accent this is, but uh, it's French, I guess. Okay. No, I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, bye. Yay. Bye. Bye. Free Britney. Free Britney.